In this video, we're going to discuss where the formula for arc length of a curve comes from. And so I have my curve here, y equals f of x. And let's say we want to get the length from a to b. Well, what we're going to do is break it up into a bunch of slices, all equally spaced. And that's going to break the curve up into these corresponding slices. So this might be our x1, x2. Pretend these are equally spaced, x4, so on and so forth. Well, let's just take one interval and zoom in on it. So we have our curve there. So I can pretend this is really zoomed in. And we're going to go between two points. So this would be our x1 and our x2. Well, we're going to approximate that with a straight line. So the idea is we're picking enough points so it's okay to approximate these with a straight line. Now that straight line has a change in y and it has a change in x. And we would do this for each of these pieces. We're just going to look at one particular contribution. And what we want is the length of that curve. Well, the length of that curve, by the Pythagorean theorem, L is approximately, so L is the length of the black curve. It's approximated by this red curve. It's approximately the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared by our Pythagorean theorem. So that's approximately the size of our slice. Now I'm going to do a little manipulating with this L. So L is approximately, I'm going to factor a delta x squared out of each term. So I got delta x squared times 1 plus, now this didn't have a delta x in it to begin with, so what I'm going to have to do is rewrite that as delta y squared over delta x squared. So what you can see is if I were to multiply this back through, I would get up to the line above. Now I'm going to do two things in the next line. First thing, I have the square root of a square, so I'm going to pull that out of the radical. So under the radical I have 1 plus, and both of these are being squared, so I'm just going to square them both at the same time. Delta y over delta x, the quantity squared, and then here's my delta x sitting on the outside of the uh, radical. Now, what we need to do is we need to, this is the contribution of just this one piece, so maybe I should put this as L sub i, because that's that ith slice. Then the total length is going to be the sum of these, i equals 1 to infinity, to n, excuse me, of all these L sub i's. So we're going to add these up. Well, as we do that, it should be an n, what we're going to do is we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, taking the limit as n goes to infinity, are going to make our delta x and our delta y go to infinitely small. They are going to go to our dx and our dy. So what I know is that on that ith slice, L sub i, I'm basically approximating it with my derivative, 1 plus dy dx squared dx. This is for that one slice. Now what we're going to do is sum over all of our slices, which will give us our Riemann sum. And when we do infinitely many slices, that's where we get our definite integral. So the integrand is 1 over, or excuse me, square root of 1 plus. You could write this as dy dx squared dx. Or a lot of times you'll see this written as 1 plus f prime of x squared dx and our limits are a to b. So 
Now you've seen the derivation of the formula. Finding arc length from this point on is just going to be applying the formula.